Now, the story is, you're going to be in important positions in your companies, uh, but my assumption is that you are a still, you will still be a step away from being the number one. And the question for me is, and for you is, what does it take to become a number one? The first one is transparency. Transparency means that the boss knows what is happening where you, where you operate, in your department, in your business, in your division, in your whatever, in your function. If you think the number one guy, the boss, is trying to sell to his shareholder, to the board, and to the analyst, he's, gonna, he's trying to sell every day, and he has to sell every day, uh, a vision about the future and the results that he's going to produce. And he has to produce a plan, and he's going to say how much sales in 2016, estimate, 2017, 2018. Deep inside, he doesn't know whether those results are achievable, because nobody knows, because, you know, anything can happen during the year. But he is in the business of living with uncertainties and selling to the outside certainties. <laughs> so he is alone and he is scared and he's preoccupied and worried because he has made he has put his face behind the numbers and he knows that the numbers are by no means assured selling certainties is living with uncertainties the last thing that he wants from you is more uncertainties because you don't report what the situation is so transparency is fundamental without transparency there is no trust that cannot be trust Second thing, uh, you have to cultivate high ambitions. In, in this effort, the number one guy is alone because everybody wants more or less to live with the present level of performance when, and, and, and people just don't want to, 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 to underwrite a high level of ambition. And this is his job. He has to increase the level of ambition with it, the delivery in a number of small steps, but continues and he needs your help. And if your help doesn't come through, he's not gonna evaluate you the way you want to be evaluated. Aligning with objectives, with the objectives of the boss, and, and, and being available for, for change. Now, what happens? Uh, uh, alignment to the objective means that when something changes in the company, in the, in the market, etc., you need to change the direction of the company and you need to adapt yourself, I mean, to the new, um, to the new course, and you have to subscribe to it. What happens when you don't agree? You, you stand up, you say what you think in a fair and nice way, but then, after the discussion, you have to be the most loyal to the number one guy because, because he expects it. I mean, and if you're loyal, he will notice it, and you're gonna be miles ahead of all the others, if I may say this. <coughs> Um, you, you're paid for, for performance, right? And, and, and in order to, to produce performance, you're assigned resources and a certain level of autonomy. Performance, what is it in the end? Uh, certainly it is a result, but, but in producing the result, it's a race that you have to engage and you, in which you're measuring yourself. Uh, it's obvious, I mean, uh, when, uh, when you deliver the results, you, you cannot deliver something which is half right and half wrong, you gotta do it right, so you gotta be effective, you gotta be efficient, and effectiveness and efficiency in producing the results are fundamental. In every company, you have a control system that delivers um, the figures to you in terms of the month, this month's sale, the profit, the, 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 the working capital, the whatever, etc. okay? And let's concentrate on the PNL, which is the, the, the really important thing, or the cash flow, I mean, cash flow or PNL. Okay, the PNL. Don't wait for the accounting to produce the PNL. You gotta have your own idea of what is gonna come out at the end of the month. You have to develop an informal system which sends to you the information, which helps you understand whether this month you're doing right or wrong. People, when it comes to, to leading people, you have basically, and, and you need that, that something be done by them, you find them in one of two situations. They are willing or they are not willing what you are asking them to do. They are capable or they are incapable 
of, of producing what you're, what you're asking them. Your leadership has to change according to the four situations in which you find, you find your, 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 your counterpart. If the person is willing and capable, you only need to say, hey, this probably needs to be done, and he will take care of it. I mean, he's willing, he's capable, huh? and, and he's going to do it. Um, when you have people who are capable of doing something, but they are not willing, what do you do? You cannot delegate. If they don't want to do it, you have only one option, convince. If somebody is willing and not capable, huh? He's willing to, to help you. I mean, I'm here to help you, but I don't know how to do it. What do you do? You gotta tell him what to do. You gotta teach him, right? So in the first case, you just say and delegate. In the second case, you convince, because the guy uh, uh, doesn't want to do it, so you gotta convince him. Uh, in the third case, the guy wants to do it, but, but he is not capable, you gotta show him, you gotta tell him, you gotta instruct him, you gotta teach him. And if the guy is not capable and not willing, well, I mean, separation at times is important. Quickly <laughs> um, to the end, the delegation. You will have a major choice to make, and that is the number, sometime in your life, the number of reports that report to you. And you can say that more than three or four reports uh, is not what it takes, and, and, and I would li like to argue that 50 reports is what, uh, is what you should be considering. In, but, I mean, if, 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 if you want an organization that works, you got to have a large number of people reporting to one. That's my point of view, and apologies no, 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 if no, I no, say no, something no, totally different yeah, from, from yeah. what has been said. But, I mean, my, the thing that I'm proposing to you is, is a high level of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, high number of people reporting yeah. to one, because that forces people uh, to choose the best. So a wider span of control. Wider span of control. And care for people is, is a fundamental thing. Remember, you can fool somebody sometime, you cannot fool everybody every time. So you cannot show that you care and not care inside. People understand it. Uh, um, what does it mean, care for people? Producing opportunities for them in which they can deliver, they can show themselves how they are good, etc. Coaching, because when you give them something extraordinary in which they can perform or outperform, um, Coaching is, is important because you help them, you know, do the right thing. Uh, and celebrating when, 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 when the results are there. And this is, you know, caring for people. Producing opportunities, coaching to get them to be successful, and celebrating their success. Last one is obeying uh, uh, to the rules. Um, uh, it doesn't need much explanation. There are the laws, there are the regulations, there are the authorities and there are the internal rules, uh, it's a must, and, uh, and, and it doesn't take much, much explanation. You gotta follow the law, you gotta follow the instructions by the various authorities, 